called uh, Muskegon Lake Watershed Partnership. Can you hear me back there? No? How's that? Okay, everybody just find a seat and uh, we'll get this party started. Um, I'm Dennis Kirksey, I'm chair of the Muskegon Lake Watershed Partnership. Uh, we're a public advisory council that's here to help advise uh, Eagle, DNR, EPA, um, the community residents. We're kind of the go-between between general public, feet on the trails or rubber on the road, whatever you want to call us, uh, to the governmental agencies that are a lot of times orchestrating and dictating what happens or doesn't happen in our environment. Um, so we are a really diverse group. We're made up of people from all walks of life and like I'm sure this room is. So if I, usually we start out, we go through and we introduce ourselves and we say who we're representing or who we're there, where we're coming from and our background or our walk of life, but I don't really want to take the time because we have a lot to talk about. So what I'd like to do, if you're here representing one of the governmental agencies like MDNR or DEQ or uh, see some county officials, um, if you're in any way, shape, or form a governmental employee, why don't you raise your hands? Okay, that's a decent mix. How many are just general population, citizens, concerned? All right. Um, just so I have an idea, how many of you are in some way affiliated with the Muskegon Lake Watershed Partnership? Okay, so we've got a pretty diverse audience even within our own group here. Um, appreciate that. That helps us to have a little better idea who we're, who we're representing. Um, this meeting is really being facilitated by a question that's come up over and over in the last six months in particular, um, having to do with public access and what, uh, what realm we're walking in. We have a lot of public access properties that are available on the South Shore of Muskegon Lake. And so that's, and that's our primary focus is the South Shore because of that being controlled by the city of Muskegon. So it really motivated a lot of questions within our own group and within the general public. And we thought it'd be good to have an informational meeting like this where we could find out some of the lands that are protected and what type of protections on them and conversions. So I'm not gonna preach uh, everybody else's message that you're gonna get to hear. So let them have their, their discussion. Um, what am I missing? Um, we're gonna jump right into it, I guess. That'd be good, Kathy. Uh, I will, will say this is this part of what was facilitating this is our lakewide management plan, and this is just a part of that that plan, which is a pretty extensive uh, plan that we continue. It's a living document. We continually are updating that. Uh, Kathy Evans. Hi. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I really appreciate it. A lot of friendly faces here. Hope you enjoy tonight's presentation and hope we all learn something and continue to move forward with the cleanup, restoration of Muskegon Lake and ensuring that we have good public access to our natural resources. So while we're working on this, um, I work for the West Michigan Shoreline Regional Development Commission. We're a regional planning agency. Uh, we have five counties that we serve in West Michigan, including Muskegon County and the 13 county region that we focus on as well under the Regional Prosperity Initiative. Um, my job there is to be the environmental program manager. And we have with us today our executive director, Aaron Kuhn, and our finance manager, Amanda Snyder. So hello. Thank you for coming. Um, we have programs in transportation, economic development, um, recreation, uh, local government services, master plans, land use planning, but a lot of the work that I've been doing um, in particular as the staff support person for this volunteer group, Muskegon Lake Watershed Partnership, has been to advance the restoration of Muskegon Lake and getting it off of the list of Great Lakes areas of concern. And there were originally 42 Great Lakes areas of concern, 28 in the United States, and 14 in the state of Michigan. Two of them have been cleaned up to be able to be delisted, and White Lake is one of them. So <coughs> yay to White Lake, right? <laughs> so 
So um, I can just, you know, learn it. <laughs> um, so Muskegon Lake was designated as an area of concern in 1985, 1987. Um, there was a remedial action plan written for it. And as you can see, the past industrial shoreline um, really um, didn't really allow people to have much access to the lake. And so that practice of filling in the lake with waste material started really with the logging era. Um, we had a lot of sawmills along Muskegon Lake, and a lot of that waste ended up in the lake. And then later, we had a lot of foundries, and that spent foundry sand that had oils and metals associated with it also ended up in the lake. And so a lot of our shoreline ended up filled out far into water that then was deep, if you would step off of it, rather than shallow like, uh, with you know emergent wetlands or sandy beach areas. We lost a lot of that. So as you can see from these pictures, these were places on the lake shore that you wouldn't want to go, um, you know, unless you maybe worked for a factory on the lake or something, you maybe would be down there, but you wouldn't really use it much for recreation, although I will say a lot of people did find niches and places um, where they could go in and fish and get access. And so we have a long legacy and a history of people who really wanted that and did their best to make sure that we had places for that. And just another uh, few pictures of the type of fill that went into Muskegon Lake and the damage that was done. So beginning in the 90s, Grand Valley State University got very involved in doing some baseline studies to determine whether or not we still had problems in the lake. Because we knew we had them, we were, we were listed as an area of concern because there were studies done in the early 80s that showed that there were problems, but did they still remain in the 90s? Well, we found out that they did. And so by the mid-90s, the Muskegon Lake Watershed Partnership had already formed in 1992 as a public advisory council and um, worked with Grand Valley State University, um, the DNR, DEQ, now EGLE, um, EPA, and a lot of different community groups and local governments to set targets and goals for cleanup. We had to determine how clean were we gonna get Muskegon Lake, how much restoration should we do before it could come off of that area of concern list. So all of that planning for all those decades, and a lot of it without any money, hardly any money associated with it, not to do the work, just to study it maybe, um, resulted in about 28 different projects and about $80 million of state and federal uh, dollars invested to do the cleanup and the restoration in all of these locations that you see here on the map. And that doesn't even count the local contributions, the volunteer hours that were spent on a lot of this work. So this is just another map that shows a little bit of a different visual on the cleanup areas. The orange area you see um, was a cleanup that was done in 2012, right in the middle of the lake on the south side um, to clean up contaminated sediments offshore from Heritage Landing and Hartshorn Marina and the Muskegon Community College Lakeshore Fitness Center. That whole area has been cleaned up on the lake bottom. Um, there's a couple of other, other orange areas that show that type of cleanup being done. And then there's a lot of blue and yellow and green along the shoreline edges and underwater where we did fish and wildlife habitat restoration. And we can't really show you the other kinds of uh, cleanups like the water quality improvements and things like that on a map, but there was an awful lot of that done too. A lot of illicit connections, cross connections with sanitary and storm sewer were connected or disconnected and corrected throughout these years. So there was a lot of contribution um, by the cities and the county and early on, especially with the county's 1973 um, implementation of the county wastewater treatment plant, even before we were an area of concern, um, that did a tremendous amount of improvement to the lake, to the water quality. And then the city of Muskegon did a lot with using state and federal brownfield uh, program money to clean up the shoreline and um, get rid of some of the old industrial buildings that were now vacant. So there's just an example of some before and after, that's at Heritage Landing, before and after one of our habitat restoration projects that was done several years ago. And there are many other examples of this, but I don't have a lot of them tonight because that's what we usually talk about at this meeting. But tonight, we're gonna get focused on the public access part of that. And just another uh, image of what the shoreline can look like when it's natural, how people can help take care of it, how it brings in wildlife, and it's a different way to enjoy the, the shoreline. So, because of that history, 
we were really disconnected from our shoreline, both psychologically and sometimes physically. We just couldn't get there, right? And people didn't think about um, doing it. Um, so we have generations of people living in this community who never got the benefit of walking down to the shoreline and you know, getting in shallow water. A lot of the shallow water was gone. We only have a few places where that still exists. And so um, this is something we're still working on now in our community is trying to get people to understand that this is beneficial and it's, it's a, a good thing for the quality of life, a good thing for our community. So we are becoming lake people. So in order to um, move us into the future beyond all of this restoration that was done under the planning of the area of concern, we have the Vision 2020 plan, which really identified a strong desire to improve natural resources, water quality, and public access to natural resources. We also um, developed in 2017 a stormwater plan to improve water quality coming out of the uh, storm outfalls on the south side of the lake uh, to make sure that in those areas where we prize recreation, it's safe, the water's clean. Uh, in 2017, um, the Coastal Zone Management uh, Grant um, helped us develop a resiliency plan so that we could make sure that we could take care of our assets along the, the shoreline uh, with these high water periods and storms that we have, ice damage, things like that. And that plan addresses commercial port uh, structures, recreational structures, natural resources, and other um, community assets. And then Imagine Muskega Lake has been developed, and Mike Franzik, the director of planning for the city of Muskega, will talk about that later. And then to boil it down to the action plan that this group, Muskegon Lake Watershed Partnership, developed and over the course of two or three years and finalized it in 2018 as a living document. And um, that plan, um, the introductory paragraph is basically that public access to natural resources provides people with an opportunity to appreciate, enjoy, understand, and value the benefits of natural resources. This connection with nature promotes a stewardship ethic for communities, residents, and those who use the resource for recreation and commerce. So the goal for the chapter eight, which is public access, there's 13 chapters in the action plan, um, is that there is an increase in the public's understanding of appreciation for and stewardship of the watershed's natural resources. Also that the public has access to natural areas and enhanced opportunities for interaction with the Muskegon Lake, Muskegon River, Lake Michigan ecosystem. And the measurable outcome of that for the Muskegon Lake Watershed Partnership is that the public has access to Muskegon Lake water resources and natural features. And that's what kind of brings us to the efforts that we've uh, been underway with recently. Um, there's a display in the back that um, lists the recommendations um, and the indicators and the partners that we think would be involved in making uh, these goals happen.